Hello everybody! My name is Rachel and welcome to another wrap-up of books that I have finished reading in the past seven days. So uh, this week I think I have four books to talk about. Um, one of them, Sisyphean by Denpao Tereshima. I am gonna do a separate review if that's ready to go, so I won't talk about it very much here. Uh, but essentially this is a very weird, kind of disgusting book about the extreme modification of human biology for different environments and needs in the far future. And I found it difficult to get through some of the body horror stuff, but on the whole I was very impressed by this book. It had fascinating ideas, just a ton of imagination, and it was written well and translated very well, and just it was a cool book. So the other things that I finished, um, the first one is The Bookman by Lavi Tedar, which is the first book in the Bookman history series, which is a trilogy, I think. Um, this had some very interesting alternate history steampunk world building, which is what I really enjoyed about it. Um, basically, I think around the 1600s, um, humans found alien lizard people on Caliban's island. And yeah, lizard people are trying to take over the world. They've deposed the British monarchy and taken their place. And this has just altered the trajectory of history very much. But also a lot of famous um, fictional characters are real here, um, as well as kind of reimagining the roles of real historical people. Like Shakespeare is alive but he's not just a playwright. Um, Sherlock Holmes, Moriarty, Mycroft are real people and characters in the story, and there, there are tons of allusions to famous kind of classic SF stories and, and things like um, Jules Verne's novels. Um, minus the lizard people thing, which I never have any patience for, I just thought it was really fun. The actual story and the main character, though, um, I was very irritated. Like, this low-level irritation throughout the entire book. Uh, basically, this young man who only knows himself as Orphan um, is seeking the bookman, who is like a famous uh, assassin who's recently killed some people, including the woman that Orphan loves. And Orphan somehow believes that he's going to get his uh, deceased lover back, so he's trying to track down the bookman. And uh, it was weak. I think, I think mainly this, this book rests on um, Orphan's story and his motivation of trying to get his, the woman he loves back, except you don't really know anything about her. It's, it's very weak. I didn't care. And Orphan as a person is so blah. He isn't very active. He just, he goes where people point him. Um, he's constantly knocked unconscious or faints. Um, and, and he doesn't really seem to achieve anything. He's literally a pawn that other forces are using. So um, I was a bit iffy on continuing with the series because I have the second book. Um, as you will discover in an upcoming video, I won't be continuing with the series because it's kind of more of the same cool idea, blah, plot lines, basically. But anyway, I will talk more about the second book in a future Try a Chapter Tag video. After that, I read Headstrong, 52 Women Who Changed Science and the World by Rachel Swaby, or Swaby, I'm not sure how to say her name. Um, this is very much in the vein of other books that I've read, like um, Women in Science by Rachel Ignatovsky or Bygone Badass Broads uh, by Mackenzie Lee. It literally is just, you know, a snapshot of 52 women um, throughout history who have made um, very influential contributions to science, to the world, and um, are really frequently forgotten or had their accomplishments um, usurped or credit for them taken by men <laughs> or uh, just sort of forgotten while the men are remembered. So I really like this. I listened to this on audiobook and um, quite a few of the women that were highlighted I already knew about them because of other books I've read. Some of them were new to me and 
it, it was like all the other books I've read like it very interesting. I think it's some of the more recent books that I've read are actually based on material in this book. This always kept coming up in the references and resources sections of other books so I finally read it and it was very good. I would definitely recommend it if you are looking uh, to uncover some of the women in history who shouldn't be forgotten. And lastly, I have Norstralia by Cordwainer Smith. This is the only novel that he ever wrote, and it's set in his Instrumentality of Mankind series. Everything else in this world is short stories, and I think that's pretty much how Smith made a name for himself by writing short stories, and they may arguably be better than the novel. Maybe I will find out someday. So, Norstralia. You may, like me, be wondering what that word means. I bought the book because I was just curious about the title. Norstralia means Old North Australia, which is a planet um, populated by people from the original Australia. And um, these sheep farmers on Norstralia have a monopoly on the immortality drug called Strune. They take care of their gigantic constantly sick sheep, which produce the virus from which the immortality drug is produced. This means that these sheep farmers are some of the wealthiest people in the galaxy. You would never know it though because they insist on maintaining a very simple, old-fashioned, rough lifestyle. One of the ways that they do this, and in order to keep their population down, um, is population control. Not birth control, by the way. They have this very brutal draconian rule where um, they execute or euthanize teenagers if any of their children fail to um, pass a particular test when they're uh, about 18, uh, they are euthanized. So the main character of this novel is Rod McBann, the 151st. He's the last heir of the McBann family, which are a um, very long-lived, very well-known family on Australia. And uh, he has been recycled through childhood four times in an attempt to get him through this test. He is on his last chance. He does kind of pass the test. He is flawed by an Australian standards because he doesn't have reliable telepathy, which is just a given on Australia. Everybody hears and speaks mentally uh, rather than physically. Uh, Rod isn't so good at doing that, but he still manages to pass the test. Um, but he has this friend turned enemy from one of his childhoods who wants to murder him. Reasons. He's apparently very bitter because he's not immortal. Um, so Rod, uh, wants to stop his enemy and ends up getting advice from his family's computer, which leads him to play the stock market, become the wealthiest person in the world, and buy, yes, literally buy, the planet Earth birthplace of humanity. For plot reasons, Rod ends up going to Earth. Adventures ensue. People either are throwing women and their daughters at him because money, or trying to assassinate him because money, or just trying to bankrupt him because money. Um, and the first half, I was kind of entertained. It was very adventure, young man's adventure, maybe kind of a coming of age story. And then we got to the halfway point. And then just kind of the predictable, old fashioned, classic sci-fi element stuff happened involving mainly women. That just, I just, at one point I just sort of gave up. There, There's this bit uh, where Rod is introduced to a cat girl. There are under people. They are um, people derived from animals who are meant as like slaves for humanity. And this cat girl is assigned to Rod um, to pretend to be his wife while he's kind of undercover to avoid assassins. And as soon as the sexy feline lady showed up, I was like, she's gonna get naked. There is always a scene in books of this era with boobs. And I was so right, 30 pages later, 
she's standing in, or not standing, they're floating. She's talking to Rod and she's like, do you know who you are? Don't you want me? And she rips her dress open and there's this whole passage describing her body and her breasts and how big they are and what shape they are. And her nipples are like candy. And I was like, wait, come to a screeching halt. Candy? What does that even look like? Do her nipples look like pink gummy bears or something? I don't know. <laughs> Gumdrops? <laughs> It just is the kind of thing that reminds me of people saying, oh yes, old science fiction, it was written for 14 year old boys. And I'm like, actually, I'm pretty sure that there were a large number of grown ass men reading these books too. And I can just see passages like the boobs and nipples scene as kind of like 1960s masturbatory material. And you know, if you're into that, if your thing is feline ladies, don't read this book. There's an entire furry community that can give you much higher quality porn for your particular interests. Don't read old fashioned science fiction for that. Anyway, that's what I read this past week. I feel like I should stop talking now. I'm going off the rails. So let me know if you have read any of these books and what you thought about them. My review of Sisyphean will be up in a couple of days. And until then, bye.